Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our next example problem. So it deals with cereal and cereal boxes and that's always an interesting one. You know, you buy these big boxes and they just have a little bit of cereal in them. The manufacturer always claims that that's because the boxes shake back and forth and it settles down. But somehow, I think they want to give us the impression that there's more cereal in there than there actually is. But let's say that uh, we have a bunch of cereal boxes and they claim that the standard deviation of the weight of cereal in those boxes is 0.27 ounces. A random sample of 18 boxes have a mean weight of 9.87 ounces of cereal for the contents, of course, not for the box, but for the contents, for the cereal. And they ask us to find the 95% confidence level of the average weight of the cereal. So what is the range of the weight we can expect in the cereal boxes based upon that random sample of 18 with that kind of result. All right, so how do we do that? Well, again, think of it this way. Um, we have a random distribution of all the cereal boxes. And so we're going to have a region in here that we call the critical region based upon the level of confidence that's chosen. So we have an upper critical region, we have a lower critical region, and of course we have these boundaries. And uh, we're dealing with, let's say here, 95% confidence level. So that means that the level significance is equal to 0.05. Because remember that the confidence level, the confidence level is equal to 1 minus the level of significance. So that's 1 minus 0.05, which indeed is equal to 0.95. So yes, we have a level of significance of 0.5. And then to find these boundaries of the critical regions, what we're going to do is we're going to take the z-score of the half of the level of significance because it's a two-tailed problem. And so we want to find the z-score of 0.025. And what is that equal to? Well, notice that we subtract this from 0.5 and so we end up with 0. 475 and we look this number up in the table to find the z-score of that number right there. So we go to the table we find 0 0.475, 0 0.475 it's right there and it's 1.96 on the table. It gives a z-score of 1.96 and that means the upper limit is 1.96 and that's for the z-score, and the z-score in the lower limit is minus 1.96. Now, normally we find the test statistic. Remember that the test statistic to determine whether or not we reject or accept the null hypothesis can be calculated to be equal to the sample average minus the population average divided by uh, the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the... Um, of the sample size. And what don't we know here? Well, what we're go going to do here is we're going to set t equal to the boundary of the critical limit of the critical region like this. So that means that we're going to find the point at which we're at the edge of our level of confidence. We're given the average weight of the sample we know the standard de deviation of the population and we know the sample size. So the only thing we don't know is we don't know this. And so we're going to solve this equation for the mean of the population. So first of all, we're going to bring this across over here. So that means that um, we have the test statistic times the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size is equal to the mean of the sample minus the mean of the population. And then if we solve for that, we get the mean of the population is equal to the mean of the sample size minus the test statistic times the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. So all we did was we simply solved this equation for the average of the population because we're going to want to know the range. What is the range based upon the level of confidence of 95%. And so this is equal to the 
mean and of course in this case it's going to be plus or minus um, because we want to know the upper side we not want to know the lower side so we'll do one side first and then we'll do the other side so we're good here so so let's take the uh, mean of the sample which is 9.87 minus the test statistic which is 1.96 because we set it equal to the z-score of the limit of the critical area the boundary of the critical area times the standard deviation which is 0.27 and the whole thing divided by the square root of the sample size the square root of 18 so this is equal to 9.87 minus and now we need a calculator all right so we have 1.96 times 0.27 divided by the square root of 18 and we get 0.125 so that would be uh, 0.125 uh, let's round it off to 0 0.13 0 point, yeah 0 0.13 just to keep the numbers a little bit simpler and so that means that this is equal to 9.87 minus 0 0.13 that's 9.74 and that would be the lower limit right here so if this here is mu and it can vary all the way in here because of the confidence level of 95 percent it can go down all the way to 9.74 for mu and then on the upper end we're going to add it together so that is equal to the average the mean of the sample plus the test statistic times the standard deviation divided by the sample size so this is going to be 9.87 plus the 0 0.13 and notice that brings us right up to 10.00 ounces okay on the upper side so 10.00 so we could see that with a level of confidence of 95 percent we can say about the boxes of cereal that the weight that you'll get when you go to the store and you pick up a box of that cereal that the weight of cereal in the box will be somewhere between 9.74 and 10 ounces and you can count on that with a 95 percent confidence level in other words 95 percent of the time when you grab a box you can expect that the weight of that cereal will be somewhere between 9.74 and 10 ounces and the five percent probability that will be either be less or more than that and that's kind of the way you want to look at it and that is how it's done